In this video, we're focusing on understanding how to read Chart.js documentation. And this video is really basic, but it can be very useful even if you are still quite familiar with Chart.js. So let's start to look at the documentation here. So if you go to the documentation here and let's select something, so for example, here we go to the chart types so and we just select one of these options, let's say the bar chart. And if you we see here all of this information we get all of this stuff here and then we see here the most important part here which is basically the table that indicates all of these options so this is basically an object itself however here it's being called as a namespace and the reason why is that this specific item or namespace can or has a specific command and does a certain thing so for example here we have this namespace of background color which is a type of color, meaning that you can use different kind of color commands. By default, it is set here on the RGBA color. And you can see it's scriptable and indexable. And this means the following. If you have scriptable, you understand that you can use a script to give it a color. And if it's indexable, it would mean that it supports an array value, which is possible with the colors here. So if you go further on, here you can see it's a number, this is the base, and the default is set on blank, and it's indexable, etc, etc. Here, same story here, in this case, is not scriptable, nor it is indexable. It is a fixed value here, whatever the value would be, and this is a number type. Here you can see same, all the same op options. So if we would say, for example, the border color, we would like to know the color types, select on this. You can see here all of the structures or options that you can use for colors. So this, the RGBA colors, you have, I guess here, same story here. You also have the hex codes and you also have default string values that say green, lime, red, gold, etc., etc. All of these things are basically related to colors. So if we go back here, let's go back here and then go down here, you can see here some other options. This is a string skip border and it indicates your specific value we have here the number as well and then here we have an object an object could be that there's multiple things within each other same here here we have an object as well which is like an array but also here an object which is an array within an array so you have double arrays here or nested arrays within each other for boolean we say yes or no or true or false basically so most of these are consistent with this and you can see here for example here this is interesting with the point style so the point style and the type is considered a point style but the point style you can see here is a circle which is a string meaning here this is probably a string value but there are fixed values in here so if we select this you can see here all of the fixed values that they that you can use only and this is basically how you can read Chart.js. Many people, if they look at Chart.js, they're getting confused because they see Chart.js, but they don't understand that Chart.js is based on JavaScript. So all of these are JavaScript, but then it's confined in a pre-coded format so that you can use to quickly draw a chart. And basically Chart.js, and this makes Chart.js very challenging, consists of multiple disciplines together. Meaning you need to understand APIs for Canvas, you need to understand uh, how JavaScript works, working with arrays in JavaScript, but also how JavaScript can draw something specifically in the canvas. And the more advanced you go, you probably want to understand how to use PHP or how to use a database to extract values, which is a very common thing as well. However, with this, if you look at consistently of all of these options here, these are just basic if you look at these, these are just objects in JavaScript. And you can see it's just exactly the same. And I have another one regarding the data structures. Shows you a sample of that where you can create your own namespace that will be recognized in JavaScript, but probably not recognized in Chart.js. Although you can make it recognizable. So if you're interested in that, I highly recommend you one of my other videos to watch. So I would recommend you to check out this specific video here regarding to data structures. Data structures really breaks down an understanding of how Chart.js uses JavaScript to 
to make these objects readable. And I highly recommend you to understand this because with this, you can do so much more.